Let's go over the top five beard <laughs> trim mistakes to avoid. I'm going to give you guys one that is specific to if you go to the barber, another one that is specific to if you trim your own beard, and we're going to start off with three general mistakes that should apply to anybody that does a beard trim. First, quick introduction. My name is Dancy Bearded. I do not fear beard trims. I know a lot of you are scared of these clippers. I don't fear them. We just got to avoid these mistakes, but I do want to say thank you for checking this video out. If you guys are excited to hear this information or you appreciate the channel, please, for free, take a quick second, hit that thumbs up on the video. And if you like taking care of your beard or learning about beards, consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. I think you're in the right place. Number one would be training over trimming. There are too many guys that jump way too quickly into trimming their beard rather than trying to figure it out with their training first. They try to solve all of their beard problems by taking beard away when they realize uh, this isn't actually a magic fix at all. Try using heat, try using different tools of heat, try using different combs and brushes and seeing even especially using your hands. If you can just avoid those problems or issues with the training and styling instead of jumping to the trimming, at least for now, right? Trimming is going to be inevitable for most of us, but if you can push it back and not do it as frequently or as compulsively, that can be a huge benefit and a big mistake to avoid. Number two would be not trimming relative to your goal. Now, everything that you do for your beard should be working towards your goal, whether that is maintaining it, whether that is growing it longer, or whether that is trying for a new style, a shorter style, just make sure it is relative. And I'll give you some specific examples here. Most commonly would be the neckline. Your neckline is directly related to the goal and the style of your beard and really nothing else. If you have a beard of my length, let's say I do a transparency trim and I take off an inch or two, there is absolutely no reason in the world I should ever or let a barber ever touch my neckline. If your beard is covering where your neckline is, leave it alone. No one cares what your neckline looks like underneath your beard. You don't need to do that. No one cares what your neckline looks like when you're looking up at the ceiling. You don't ever do that. So don't trim that neckline too high if your beard is covering it. Now, let's talk about if your beard is shorter. What if you have one that is kind of relatively short and, and wraps to your face? Well, I like to give the rule, if you're looking straight on, not down, not up, straight on, if you see the neckline and it's something that looks out of place or looks like it's not neat or purposeful, at that time, you can trim or shave that neckline. Now, as your beard grows longer, just simply allow that neckline to go down with it. Now, if you're trying to get the most full and biggest, longest beard ever, is that the best way? No, it's not the best way. It's the best way to just simply let it go and get through that phase. But if you're like, I need to have it look nice along the journey, rule of thumb, when you're looking straight on, keep that neckline right where you see your beard. Anything else other than that, anything higher than that, you're just taking away the density and the support of your beard. Other examples would be if you want to grow your beard big and long, don't do the trim where you're going down on the face of the beard. For my beard, I don't touch any of this. I just simply trim down at the bottom of the length right? That is relative to my goal. Now there's nothing wrong with doing this. If you want your beard to be more sculpted, if you want it to be a shorter look, if you don't plan on going longer, totally fine. Just please think about what the end game is of your beard rather than think about what it is in the moment, right? Think about the relativity of your goal. Number three, if you style your beard, which I hope all of you do if you're watching this channel, do not trim your beard from its natural state. Trim your beard from the style in which you wear it, with the only exception being no solid products like butter, balm, or wax. This one's really important to me. I've talked about it many times over the years, but I've just heard over and over and over again the consequences of making this mistake. And I get the mindset, right? Some guys think, hey, no, 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 I don't want to style my beard. If I use heat on a regular basis, I want to wake up, not use heat. Maybe I comb my beard, maybe I put some oil in, and then I want them to trim it from that state because it'll make it easier to style. No, 
what actually happens is you get that natural trim and then the next day you do go use heat. You do style your beard in your normal way and now you're going to have all sorts of surprises that you didn't realize. Because when they trim it in that natural state, they're going to be taking stuff out to make it look good that way. Well, that doesn't usually last, right? A lot of us have seen those like barber chair photos where like, oh my gosh, that beard is perfect. Or even yourself, you sit in the chair and you're like, man, my haircut looks fantastic, my beard. And then you take a shower, then you style for the first time and you're like, oh, I didn't realize these guys are hanging out. Oh, I didn't realize this was here. You want to trim from the style in which you wear it. Trust me on that one. I think that's really, really important. With the exception of a very short beard, you can get away with it either way in, in that kind of situation. Number four is for those of you that go to the barber to get your beard trimmed, and that would be avoid not communicating clearly enough. Man, I hear on a daily basis horror stories from guys getting their beard trimmed at barbers. In almost all of those cases, it has nothing to do with the skill or the experience of the barber. It just simply has to do with the two parties not being on the same page. Sometimes I feel like as men, we're too nice in these situations. We go in and we're like, ah, they're the experts. I don't want to insult them. I don't want to say too much. Even when the trim is going in a direction you don't like it, so many guys sit there and they don't say a word until they leave the barber shop. And then they post on Facebook. They tell friends and they just bash the barber in the barber shop when really it wasn't really anything to do with the barber. They were just doing what they thought was best given the information that you gave them. Here is a tip for you, the best tip of all time. Bring a picture. Whether it's a gold beard of a celebrity or someone you saw online, or it's a former picture of your beard in a state that you loved it. It is really hard to argue or mess up a picture. Or a video, even better, show them a video. That is a language that anyone can speak. Other things that you can do is use specific measurements. If I go in and I say, hey, my beard's at 13 inches right now, I would like off a half inch of transparency from the bottom. They're going to be able to do that. Barbers have tools and devices to measure specifically, right? Their combs have certain notches on them to show them those distances. Be specific if you know, right? If you have a shorter beard and you use guards on something like a trimmer, tell them, hey, I would like the two guard right here. I would like to fade into a one or a skin fade. Be specific as possible, but also understand your lingo might not match up with theirs. So anything that is like undeniable or measurable is a good thing. Here's an example of a mistake to avoid. Don't go into a barber and say, hey, I would like to get my beard cleaned up. Whoo, your definition of a cleanup could be vastly different than the definition of the barber's cleanup. For me, a cleanup is, I'm just gonna take off a little off the bottom. For a barber, it could be like, all right, I'm gonna go down here, I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna do the mustache, I'm gonna do all this. You want to be specific. Don't say things like a cleanup. Don't say things like, oh, you know, just line it up, shape it up. You guys, that could open up just a vast sea of possibilities. Really communicate and don't be afraid to be detailed and take your time. You are paying for the service and the barber wants you to have the best experience possible. Number five is for those of you that do your beard trims yourself and you do it at home just like I do. You want to avoid trimming when you are short on time or you have a restricted amount of time. This is really important and I see it time and time again because of situations like this. Let's say you have a dinner party or a class reunion or a wedding or something going on and you're like, I'm gonna trim before this dinner party. Well, you have put a cap on your time. You have to leave by a certain amount of time and when you do that, you're gonna rush yourself. You're gonna start to feel the pressure. You're gonna start to sweat and that's not a good thing. I have been there. The only time that I've really had a bad beard trim is when I was gonna go out to dinner with Sam and I was like feeling all frantic. I started sweating, started getting all red and I did a bad trim. I'll never forget, she walked in the bathroom and she's like, are you good? I was like, I need time. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. I'm just kind of freaking out right now. You want to have the ability to walk away from your trim. You want to have the ability to finish your trim tomorrow or the next day. I often do three day trims. And if you're trying to get your beard looking perfect for a dinner party, oftentimes in our mind, walking away with like a not perfect trim isn't an option. So just don't put yourself in that situation where you're setting up your trim for a time where you're like, I got to have it perfect. I got to have it now. Whew. Three day trims, give yourself plenty of time. And for anybody out there, when we're talking about trims, a little bonus tip right here, only trim your beard on good beard days. You never wanna trim your beard on a bad beard day. 
Let's wrap this thing up with a conclusion. First, I wanna hear your stories. I wanna hear the mistakes. I wanna hear the bad experiences. Tell me about when you went to a barber and it didn't meet your expectations. Was there something you learned from it? Tell me about a bad beard trim at home that went wrong. Let me know those experiences. I promise you, you are not alone. We will be able to relate. You'll have people commenting and say, oh yeah, I've been there. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Let's get those comments down below and I even have a little giggle at some of them. And then beyond that, do you have any questions about the things that I talked about. And the last one, probably the most important, what tips do you guys have to add on? Obviously, I could have made a list of probably a hundred beard trim mistakes to avoid if we wanted to get really into detail, but I didn't want to make this some ridiculously long video. I knew that you guys would have my back and you would add some tips to avoid down in the comments down below. Again, whether you go to a barber, whether you do it yourself, I hope at some point along your journey, you are kind of making that beard look purposeful and you're considering a trim at least. Let's get those experiences, those questions, and those additional tips down below. Thank you guys for watching. I really love this stuff and I appreciate every single interaction. My name is Dan C. Bearded. Please stay bearded and stay positive.